In addition to airplanes, Japan also sent submarines to Pearl Harbor. At about four in the morning, a minesweeper operating just outside Pearl Harbor saw what they thought was a periscope. And they called it in and a destroyer was sent to investigate. They quickly spotted the periscope and immediately started firing about 6.40 a.m. They also rolled depth charges. The destroyer reported that it was their gun, number three, that fired the shot that scored the hit that sunk the submarine. Thank you for checking out History X. This morning, we're gonna go on a mission to find the gun that fired the first shots of Pearl Harbor. My name is Ken Stano, and I am a World War II historian, mechanical engineer, and pilot, and I love digging into stories surrounding people, places, and events, especially in World War II. So a lot of people know Pearl Harbor, sneak attack by the Japanese, destroyed a lot of the Pacific fleet literally while it was sleeping on a Sunday morning. What a lot of people don't know is that the United States actually fired the first shots of Pearl Harbor. Now, how is that possible? Well, in addition to airplanes, Japan also sent submarines to Pearl Harbor. They were actually called midget submarines, mini submarines. They were two-man submersibles. At about four in the morning, a minesweeper operating just outside Pearl Harbor off the coast of Hawaii saw what they thought was a periscope and they called it in and a destroyer that was patrolling off the entrance of Pearl Harbor, the USS Ward, was sent to investigate. They quickly spotted the periscope and immediately started firing about 6.40 a.m. They also rolled depth charges and the depth charges were reported actually lifting the sub out of the water. The destroyer, the USS Ward, actually reported that it was their gun, number three, that fired the shot that scored the hit that sunk the submarine. Now, scholars actually say, no, 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 no. The sub probably foundered, took on water after the depth charging, and that's how it sunk. They probably didn't score a hit. Well, in 2002, the University of Hawaii actually found and located the midget submarine and did several dives on it. And they found that in the imagery, in a lot of the video, you can clearly see a hole at the base of the conning tower, I believe on the starboard side of the conning tower, a hole clearly shot from a four inch gun. It's the right size. So in 2002, now they've got evidence that this four inch gun from the USS Ward actually did score a hit and it was responsible for the sinking of this midget submarine. Now, that four inch gun, the exact gun, not a replica, the gun that fired the first shots of Pearl Harbor is located right here in the Twin Cities. So that's, I'm gonna go look for it this morning. Now here's another part of the story that's pretty interesting. The USS Ward was built towards the end of World War I, so it's pretty old. Well, the United States, they had already come out with newer destroyers, like the Fletcher class, for example. So they took these older destroyers and they turned them into what are called fast transports. As a fast transport, the USS Ward was, there it is. That's it. That's the gun. That's gotta be it. That's gotta be it. Where's the parking lot? Where, where can I park? Here we go. This is it. This is the gun from the USS Ward that fired the first shots during Pearl Harbor. Now, let me finish the story. So, the Ward, like I said, was converted to a fast transport. It could carry a couple hundred soldiers to an enemy beach. It could also perform escort duties. When the uh, ward was converted to a fast transport, two of the guns were removed and replaced with anti-aircraft guns. The number three gun that fired the shots that sunk that mini submarine, this is it right here. The four inch gun, 
It was removed and replaced with an anti-aircraft gun. This gun was then given to the state of Minnesota because those shots that were fired that day, December 7th, 1941, that gun was manned by St. Paul Naval Reservists. So that's what the gun is doing here. Here's an important part of the story. On the morning of December 7th, 1941, when the ward was firing on and sunk the midget submarine, it was under the command of Commander William Outerbridge. Now here's what's interesting. Precisely three years to the day after Pearl Harbor, so December 7th, 1944, the ward as a fast transport is performing escort duties during the Battle of Leyte Gulf off the Philippines. And unfortunately, the ward is hit by a kamikaze pilot and catches on fire, and they can't put the fire out. So the crew is ordered to abandon ship, and then the destroyer USS O'Brien, commanded by a William Outerbridge, the very same William Outerbridge that commanded the ward just prior to Pearl Harbor, is ordered to fire on and sink the USS Ward. So it's stories like that, three years to the day, it's the exact same commander, obviously on another destroyer, that is ordered to seal the fate of the ward. I don't think anyone else should have been allowed to do it. It was perfect that he was the one to do it three years to the day. This is the gun right here. It's a four inch naval gun. And you know, when you see something like this, it makes you wonder how, how accurate they could be. But there's a lot that's on display here. Obviously, elevation markings, the breach over here, And the gun was manned by two sailors. One sailor was responsible for traversing the gun left and right, and then the other sailor, most likely the one over here, was responsible for the elevation of the gun. And I believe this sailor also fired the gun. So here we have a plaque honoring the sailors that were involved in that attack on December 7th. And this plaque here talks about the actual event and how the gun came to be here. So let me get on the other side. It's, it's just amazing to have it here. And I'm just glad I can show you guys this piece of history. It's pretty impressive. So if you like stories like this, if you like seeing pieces of history like the gun that fired the first shots of Pearl Harbor, I hope you'll consider subscribing to History X. Uh, because I like posting videos like this uh, to share with you guys. My name is Ken Stano. Thank you for checking out History X.